So the fun thing with the serpent is, how does a serpent talk? What, what, and not only that, but why is the serpent's punishment to crawl on its belly when that's what it does? If you don't know how to read biblical poetry, if you don't know the formal qualities of parallelism and expansion, you are missing out on one third of the Hebrew Bible. Whatever theological background you have, you're going to have your own hypothesis, that is to say, your own plot and narrative. What the literary reading allows you to do is to find new details that work within that overall plot or narrative. Now the question becomes, what's the way in which the specific details and the particularities kind of show us the subtlety and the nuance to really bring to the fore to these theological insights that are so important to our traditions? The book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible, is profound, serious, and mysterious. Did all this start somewhere? And if so, where? And if there actually was a creator, he would actually have to be outside nature. He wouldn't be just that dense lump at the beginning of things. He'd have to be something outside that thing to be the source of it. What I hope you'll get from studying Genesis in this course is a deeper appreciation of the biblical insights with regards to the human person, psychology, our predilection towards rivalry, but also reconciliation. I'm Justin Jackson, professor of English at Hillsdale College. This is the course on Genesis. Let's begin.